Hi again, everybody. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce the second youth leader that we'll be presenting today. His name is Ghislaine Iracose. He is a passionate youth empowerment and sustainability researcher. And since 2019, Ghislaine has actually participated in MasterCard Foundation's Youth Think Tank program. Um, what he's been doing is exploring pertinent issues that young people face in expanding their businesses. He's worked previously as a sustainability consultant, and that included participation in the EU-Africa Circular Economy Cooperation, working on an African Development Bank project as a freelance consultant for Planet Partnerships, and developing a green growth investment program in Africa, with a particular focus on Rwanda's waste management industry. During his time with us uh, during the SIPE Youth Leadership Program, he has been researching the financial and non-financial mechanisms that should be adopted in post-COVID recovery to support youth-led businesses in East Africa. So he's basically done um, some extraordinary research to outline uh, a framework for the uh, business ecosystem in a couple of East African countries. Um, he is provided recommendations for financial institutions, government institutions, um, and um, we'll be hearing more about his research uh, very shortly. And then again, we'll have time for some Q&A after that. Thank you so much. Turning it over to you, Ghislaine. Okay, uh, thanks, Ritika. Okay, uh, thanks, Ritika. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it me, gives me a great pleasure to present my research project. Uh, over the last three months, I have been exploring COVID-19 impact on East African SMEs and the influence of business continuity plans and stakeholders. This was a particular interesting project uh, to lay out a framework for change as an aspiring entrepreneur who is active in East African ecosystem. Okay, uh, in our research project, uh, we target uh, SMEs, uh, basically uh, business readers between ages, uh, between uh, 18 to 35 age gap, which is a general youth age bracket in East Africa. Specifically, uh, we had also parameters that defined what kind of SMEs to target. While we were uh, sector agnostic, we targeted SMEs uh, that have a nano operating capital between one US dollar to one million US dollar, as well as a workforce base of between one to 250 employees. Our target countries, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, despite uh, shelling the regional integration, have a similar entrepreneurial innovation policies which is common uh, research ground for our project. The research uh, covered the main topic, uh, including a business continuity plan, uh, an organizational approach that is part of risk management for businesses that uh, found themselves in this catastrophic situation. We also touched on COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which is an um, infectious disease that emerged in late 2019, caused by uh, SARS uh, COVID-2 virus, disrupting economic activities in East Africa and globally. So over uh, last 16 months, uh, when the first case was recorded in Kenya, measures were taken to cap down the speed of coronavirus. Such measures included uh, some of that affect SMEs, including supply chain disruptions, limited access to the market, and insufficient uh, finance. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, found most of the businesses in East Africa unready, embracing, and ready to embrace the agility, and uh, more importantly, um, we should but uh, the a bit of asset of something uh, to build capacity for risk. Okay, that's it. Uh, there is a need to explore how SMEs can build students throughout the beyond the pandemic. Um, for exploring more a bit of to revive uh, organization of digital um, resources to build more economy. It's uh, just to explore how the uh, means or uh, 
Apple Fantastic Ground for exploring the ability to drive those S. Our research method classified into different five S and we engage in the phase. Twenty five fifteen of them participated in our first group. Both focus group surveys and outline our inventory positive data too. We use this to compare the rate of between S that had business continuity. In the last uh, phase of recommendations, so took SMEs, uh, uh, especially those uh, programs uh, that were launched in the COVID 19, and, and uh, tested some that provide uh, more insights on how those programs can be revived and, and Uh, so after I came across the full uh, so, uh, SMEs uh, lacked uh, custom access and supply chains as most affect the business functionalities. And we uh, uh, found that like 65% um, uh, had no business continuity plans in place when the pandemic restrictions were introduced. And this has uh, affected them uh, with a majority citing mental health as one of like um, uh, uh, kind of like a personal capacity that were affected. For the SME that had uh, business continuity plans in place, only 35 of them um, had found the payment in their business plans. While the respondents have applied support, uh, we found that 34% successfully secured financial support and 86% uh, are recommended that financial support should come along with soft support, uh, risk, uh, just rank management as a uh, um, highly needed uh, soft support, which capacity uh, while also reviving this COVID-19 pandemic. So these findings assist us to develop for both SMEs and governments. And for SMEs, uh, we highly encourage them to integrate business continuity plans in the company's strategies and consider it as uh, a priority business functionality that needs both financial resources and human capital. And we uh, highly stress on uh, the need for um, SMEs to build more capacity, especially uh, 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 highlighting the need for them to uh, uh, disclose data and uh, data are real, on real time basis to ensure that the government and policymakers have access uh, throughout this uh, COVID 19 pandemic, uh, just able to make informed decisions based on uh, data provided by SMEs. And uh, we also stressed on the need for SMEs uh, uh, just to integrate. Uh, business continuity plans, uh, but also uh, uh, just put aside uh, possible funding as a kind of like a contingency funds for uh, their uh, business continuity plans, which is crucially needed uh, to implement business continuity plans in COVID-19 and even beyond COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, for the governments, uh, we highly encouraged them to set up a credit registry, uh, just uh, enabling SMEs to put their their uh, credit profiles, and which will assist them to uh, increase uh, their credit scores, enabling them to access finance uh, from different finance institutions. And the governments, uh, they should also revisit their COVID-19 recovery programs, ensure that they are uh, uh, embedding uh, business continuity plans and provides uh, SMEs uh, capacity building, including a uh, business continuity plan approach, uh, especially on how they can really integrate them in their own businesses and provide also a mentoring uh, alongside with other required soft support, including accounting as well as like legal services, enabling them to uh, overcome uh, uh, different challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, next. 
Okay, uh, as like a general recommendation, uh, we have a call for collaborative efforts. As uh, indicated by uh, a respondent from Kenya, it's crucial to uh, uh, ensure that there is like collaborative efforts uh, which are required to implement more robust policies to support uh, young entrepreneurs in East Africa while also laying the ground because we do believe those SMEs uh, will be um, a uh, tool to catalyze economic transformation in the region. Just uh, to end up or wrap up this presentation, I'd like to extend my appreciation to our uh, uh, Center for International uh, Private Enterprise for providing um, uh, financial support around the program. And my also deepest appreciation goes to my team, uh, which supported uh, and uh, data analysis as well as uh, bring a strong recommendation for all this uh, research project. Thank you. Um, our apologies for the technical difficulties that uh, were encountered during the first bit of your presentation. Um, what we're actually going to do um, because of the technical difficulties is we're gonna go ahead and take a break now um, that uh, was in the schedule. And then we are going to um, go uh, to the panel discussion right after the break. Um, and the panel discussion will be moderated by Anna Kompanik, uh, our director of global programs, who was um, uh, in the conference earlier, speaking with Hani Rosenbaum. Um, so please stick around. Um, and again, our apologies for the technical difficulties with Ghislaine, but we do hope to post his final report in his Youth Leaders Corner. So that way you'll be able to take a look at um, his findings and his research, and, um, and then we can um, go from there. So thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you soon.